This is the story of a bad decision and how that decision led to, or at least significantly contributed to, Iggy Pop becoming the godfather of punk rock. Let's start at the beginning, the Stooges. The Stooges formed in 1967 in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Their music has been characterized by its raw, primal energy and often minimalistic approach. Released in 1969, the band's self-titled debut album, The Stooges, included iconic tracks like I Wanna Be Your Dog, No Fun, and 1969. Their second album followed in 1970. Funhouse further established their reputation with tracks like down on the street and loose. And then there was raw power in 1972 with Gimme Danger and Search and Destroy. Despite their groundbreaking music, the Stooges initially struggled with commercial success and internal struggles and drugs, which all led to their disbandment in 1974. However, their influence grew over the years, and they achieved cult status, particularly among punk and alternative rock fans. The godfather of punk. At the helm of the Stooges was James Osterberg Jr., better known as Iggy Pop. He would come to also be known as the godfather of punk rock thanks to his profound influence on the genre. There are many reasons for this acclaim. From the Stooges' raw and aggressive sound, their minimalism, and Iggy's rebellious lyrics. But perhaps more than anything were Iggy's wild performances and direct, over-the-top engagement with his audiences. Iggy Pop's stage presence was unlike anything seen before. He was known for his wild, unpredictable performances, which included stage diving, in fact, he may have invented it, rolling in broken glass, and other shocking antics. This raw energy and disregard for conventional performance norms became a hallmark of punk shows. He also broke the barrier between performer and audience, engaging directly with fans in a way that was typically more confrontational than intimate. This includes an incident where he challenged an entire biker gang during a show. Let's just say it did not end all too well for Iggy. Or maybe the performance where Elton John, yes, that Elton John, surprised a drugged out Iggy during a show while wearing a gorilla costume. While initially a little iffy, that one actually ended better than you'd expect. But those are stories for another time. Pint. So, what led to this wild stage persona? How about this? A bad decision. And frankly, those kinds of decisions were pretty much the M.O. for the Stooges. First show. The date was October 31st, 1967. That was the date of the first Stooges show. I mean, figures, right? Halloween. Then booked as the Psychedelic Stooges. Iggy wore a thrift shop nightdress and a tinfoil wig, sitting on the floor while playing his Hawaiian guitar. He also created weird noises using a theremin. And a vacuum cleaner was involved, also used as an instrument. And then there was something he called the Osterizer, which was really just a blender filled halfway with water, inserted into which he had a microphone. Here's a quote from John Sinclair, who would become the manager of MC5, another legendary proto-punk and punk band. It wasn't like anything else I had ever been to. I don't know if there were 20 people there. I was terrified. I just thought, Jesus, can they hear this all the way downtown? That kind of performance would create a stir today. But back in 1967, it's no wonder that Sinclair was terrified. And I mean, he went on to manage MC5. Some of the antics at that first show have been widely documented, widely covered. One that's much harder to dig up information on, and believe me, I looked, is the one of the painted guitar and its influence on the godfather of punk getting crowned. Now, according to legend, this was the same show. Same show, October 31st, 1967. And it comes from a music historian I trust, one who has, week over week over week, year after year, been connecting the dots in alternative rock dating all the way back to the 1960s for well over 30 years. In Gimme Danger, the documentary 
about the Stooges that Jim Jarmusch did, Iggy recounts being in a rehearsal and attempting to express anger towards the band's manager at the time. He starts jumping around like, quote, chimps or baboons would before fighting, recalling that this lit up the other members of the band. It energized them, got them excited. Now, this likely came shortly before the next part of my story, or maybe it was a little after, unclear. Either way, the dance moves would become an integral part of the Godfather moniker. The next part goes like this, the painted guitar. The night before that first show, and we're talking October 30, 1967, the Stooges guitarist and bassist Ron Ashton decided it might be funny to paint Iggy's Hawaiian guitar. He painted it all. We're talking the body, the neck, the frets, the, the pickups. That's the key one right there. Everything. He painted it all. Everything. The next day, when Iggy picked up the guitar to play at the show, it, it was essentially useless, unplayable. Nothing, nothing worked. So sitting there on the stage, Iggy is left without an instrument to play. Having no backup and no time to find one to borrow, Iggy had to do something. So he improvised. He starts dancing around the stage, erratically, going a little wild. And as he's dancing, his pants start to fall down. The crowd is going wild. They don't know what to think. They're kind of freaking out, which just incites Iggy to get crazier. The band capitalizes on this energy, too. I mean, a blender and a vacuum cleaner were involved. This dancing, the lack of a shirt, his feeding off and taunting of the audience, all of these things became cornerstone to the first the Stooges, and then to Iggy Pop and his solo career. Not just that, they are a signature piece of why Iggy Pop has been hailed by many as the godfather of punk. And it can all be traced back to Ron Ashton's terrible decision to paint Iggy Pop's guitar. Had he not painted that little Hawaiian guitar, would Iggy have ended up becoming known as that shirtless rock star taunting the audience? Who knows? Would he have gone on to be crowned the godfather of punk? Perhaps. Would he have continued playing guitar in the Stooges, thus not running around like crazy, and thus not becoming legend? Maybe. That moniker he wears is so steeped in the pieces of the persona created by that guitarless, shirtless, taunting character that it all would really be up in the air. It wouldn't be the same with Iggy and a guitar. Little things happen, and they create a ripple effect. These are things I love exploring every week in my album story series. Like, what was Margaret Thatcher's role in the rise of trip-hop worldwide during the 1990s? Or how a cascade series of negative events led to the greatest perseverance anthem of all time? Or how about this one? In the early days of New Wave, Two distinct events took place that led Sex Pistols to greatly influence one of the first New Wave artists to rise in fame in the United States. Next, let's dig into the story of how Sex Pistols boosted Elvis Costello's fame and success in the good old U.S. of A. I'm Andy. This is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel. I'll see you in that next video.